Welcome to another Lunch and Learn with Uncommon Entrepreneurs. Uh, my name is Drew. I'm here with Ned uh, Argall today. Yes. Hi. And we'll be uh, getting into some of her bio in a second. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, we highlight successful entrepreneurs down here in Puerto Rico who are making moves. We're in the middle of a very interesting pandemic type scenario and we all have to be adjusting, making moves in health and fitness is a, such a key factor in that, which we'll be kind of going over today and uh, letting her explain her uh, wealth of knowledge on that subject. So uh, Ned is a vivacious uh, fitness coach that breathes life into clients. During her five years in Puerto Rico, she's developed a brand centered around health, wellness, and self-actualization. Her business and brand, Argyle Fit Club, has taken on a new life of its own uh, due to the fact that it's empowering individuals on their respective fitness journeys in a way that they could not fathom. The brand motto is Boss, Fitness, and Muse. <laughs> um, uh, accurately articulates all that Argyle Fit uh, Club is about. Uh, those fortunate enough to experience her training become a walking testimony of her coaching, teachings, and lifestyle. And that is NASM, National C Academy of Sports Medicine, TRX, and ACE, American Council of Exercise Certified. It is safe to say uh, that she possesses a deep fundamental understanding of what is required to build and maintain a body. Outside of fitness, Ned is growing into a cultural icon, appearing in films, telev television series that span from Amazon Prime, Netflix, and other uh, video on demand platforms. Ned and Argyle Fit Club are dynamic in nature, which works in her benefit as an entrepreneur in this ever changing digital landscape of health and wellness. Uh, she's poised uh, to become a referential. Uh, reference leader in the industry for years to come. So welcome. Appreciate you joining. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's a long bio. Who that was. That? <laughs> but but you have that record just to give people a good perspective. So Thank we're, you. Sit, we're sitting here in Coco House right now. You know, shout out to them, a co-working space over here in San that's that's dynamic. Um, in in Puerto Rico. So maybe fill us in on your background and and you know how you came into the fitness and how you came to Puerto Rico. Um, how I came into fitness. Um, well, I was 19 years old, I was overweight, kind of fat, um, recently graduated from high school, and was just a little bit lost with myself, so I was in the wrong crowd at the time, and just doing what I thought I thought my friends wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I lost my, myself for a little bit, so I was fat, I was disoriented, I was not happy with who I, who I was at the time, and um, I, at the same time was going through a, I went through a breakup Got and it. I had also went through a having an abortion. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a, a deeper meaning of finding out who I wanted to be moving forward. Sure. And um, I just started running. I just started running after work like I was crazy, but it was what drove me to find myself again and figure out what I wanted to do in general. Um, so I started working out at Crunch Fitness in DC at the time, I'm from DC. Um, not originally, I'm originally from Guyana, South America, moved to DC when I was 12. Um, so DC has been my longest home mm. as a human being so far. Um, so I went, the, so the winter came around and during the winter I decided I wasn't gonna run outside. It's, it's not fun running in the cold, your face is frozen. Yeah. So I joined the Crunch Fitness gym across from where I worked and um, I just started going back to classes um, it was the environment of cardio at the time I was obsessed with since I was running so much. So I did all the spin classes. Mm -hmm. After spin classes, I would do the Stairmaster and I lost weight and I looked great. And all my friends was like, what happened? What did you do? Transformation. <laughs> and I was just like, I just started working out. Yeah. I feel good. Some of my friends even uh, joined the bandwagon with me. They were like, I'm going to go to the gym. Nettie's like working out. Like yeah. she went from this to that. So obviously she knows what she's doing. So it wasn't until one of the trainers um, from the gym kind of mm -hmm. came up to me and just said that, hey, I think you'll be an awesome trainer. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting to be a trainer. I was just okay with the fact of taking classes and continue running when, once the weather had changed. So he said, no, I think you are, you like what you're doing here in the gym is great. Outside of the cardio classes, you're still here working on yourself. And that's like, the members are asking us, like, is this a trainer? Like, do you guys know her? Because 
from going to all the classes that gained popularity with the instructors. Got it. Um, and then it was more so competitive. So I wanted to be in the front. I wanted to outdo whoever, because it was just the energy at the time. It wasn't that I was trying to be cocky, but the energy, and I always held my form right. So when he came up to me and said that I should be a trainer, I was just like, I'm not in the position. I don't know what that means, what it entails, how do trainers get paid. Um, and figuring it out, going from a nine to five to a scale job where it's you have to build your own clientele was yeah. tricky at first, but I committed myself to it. So I, it was like starting from a brand new job or trying to figure out how to be an entrepreneur at the time, but you're starting from rock bottom. There's exactly. no guaranteed income coming in at all. You have to make it happen. You took the plunge. Yeah. So, and as a trainer, you have to get people to like you. You have to get people to work out with you. So luckily for me, a few people were already on standby to train with me because mm -hmm. they saw me transformed. Uh, transformed. And I've been going since. So sure. this was 2011 and it's 2020 now. Got it. Um, how did I move to Puerto Rico? Again, another breakup. These breakups, man. But <laughs> breakups inspire me. Yeah. And they push me forward. Sure. So I'm not the lonely person who's crying at home all the time. I'm the person that's going to figure out a way to move past the past. Make it so happen. my ex brought me to Puerto Rico for mm -hmm. the first time. And I think he also opened up to me that there was a place that looked like Guyana. There was a place that... Mm -hmm. I didn't have to stay in DC if I didn't want to. I can go Got back it. to the islands. So once we broke up, it was I'm going back to the islands because mm -hmm. I'm just tired of the 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 just just tired of DC. The weather sucks. And outside of the weather sucks, I mean that's all year round. Yeah. Outside of that, it was just I felt like there was that chapter needed to be closed. Mm -hmm. Um I just wasn't happy. And trying to, outside of that relationship, there was nothing else for me to, to, to live for there. If I wanted to live for my family, I had to move away Got it. so that I can be me. And, and here I am now. Got it. And you've been down here, what, five years? Or? Yeah, I moved in 2015. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. May of 2015, a month after I said I would leave this person, and I did. Got it. Interesting. <laughs> how's, how's it been down here? How's the journey? How's your fitness uh, business been going and kind of the transition um but when i tried when i moved um i was luckily I, I got hired the first gym i went to which was live i walked in and the front desk associate at the time was just like we're looking for someone like you like don't leave and the manager came out and he was from new york um, his name was richard and richard gave me a chance he saw that i was from the dmv area he's from new york so he understood the grind and he understood that what I was going to bring to this gym was the teachings from the states. And according to them at the time, it's, it's not as teachable here in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. They only have one style of training. Everyone wants to be a bodybuilder or a runner, um, or they play sports. But it wasn't enough for the general population to learn about. So once he sat down with me and I told him what, um, I, how I was interested in what I can do, I got hired the first day. That didn't give me money automatically. So I, um, I, I, I know how to make kombucha. So I ordered a SCOBY from Amazon, and I started making kombucha. And kombucha was my first income before my first client at Live. Wow. Um, but what also gained clients from Live, or how the business started, was that I was different. I brought a different technique. I brought a different energy. Mm. I brought a different style. I just brought totally everything different than what people were used to here. And that automatically I, I attracted. You definitely <laughs> bring that energy. I just, good. it automatically attracted yeah. the kind of people who wanted this energy. Yeah. And it's been going since. And I'm, I'm super grateful um, because yeah. I'm not an easy people, I'm not a, a easy person to get along with in the sense of I'm very straightforward. Yeah. I'm not here, I would just tell clients I'm not here to be your friend. I'm really here to mm. help, like help Coach. you coach you or just yeah you know, I just want I, I enjoy helping people that's yeah. what I do so for me when it comes to work my job is to help people not become their friends um, because I can become your friend but that changes what we initially came together for in the beginning so I, I keep things very separate and that also is what attracted most clients because they got tired of trainers trying to be their friend there's like I want a trainer who's interested in coaching me and teaching me because I want to learn and I've been doing that mm -hmm. and that's what I teach that's what I preach and I'm still here. That's great. <laughs> so what's your philosophy on fitness? How would you kind of describe it? Um, my philosophy on fitness is that everyone needs to have a well-balanced program. Mm -hmm. um, I just believe that 
it's you you have just it's a lifestyle so for me it's in 20 years from now do how do I want how do I see myself mm -hmm. and I've had like my grandfather for instance he passed RIP granddad but he rode a bike for as long as he could okay. but he never worked on his core he never worked on his posture mm. so has he aged he aged forward because he never really focused on strengthening any kind of muscle so I've had that example of watching people in my family age okay. and I always said I don't want to age like this so becoming a professional now in the family I'm I'm passionate because I I don't want people to go through what my family have gone through mm -hmm. so for me it's deeper than abs is deeper than wanting to lose weight. You just have to figure out how do, how do you see yourself 20, 30, 50 years from now. We all say we want to age well, but that means a health and fitness lifestyle. That means not just in your 20s, but forever. Yes. So that's my philosophy, D developing a technique or developing the idea that this is me forever, not just for a wedding, not just for a graduation, not just, oh, because I had a baby, but for everything, this is yeah. how we diminish chronic diseases altogether. So why not focus on that? Like a lifestyle. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. So what advice did you have for somebody out there that is maybe not consistently working out or wants to kind of get back into that to, to start getting into training or so forth? Um, the first thing first is always figuring out how much time do you have and what is your, I always ask like, what do you do? Are you sitting down? Mm -hmm. You're driving because so we always, see sitting down is just when I'm working, but we're sitting down to eat, we're sitting down to use the bathroom, we're sitting yeah. down to watch TV. So you're sitting down a lot, not just for work. Yep. Um, so I kind of let people know that if you're gonna start with me, like don't be afraid of the process because mm. I'm only gonna help you get better in your day-to-day -day life. Mm. So if you wanna start a program, first thing first is figure out your posture. Mm. Like what is bothering you? aches and pains, people go through things that they're not honest about sure. all the time. So if you know you're having an ache and pain versus I'm trying to get back in because I've gained some quarantine weight, yeah. it's more so figure out how to diminish the pain first, the he heal the pain, and then working out will be more enjoyable. You won't even be thinking about weight loss. Now you'll just be losing pounds and people will be telling you you look great. And then you'll be like, oh, I'm working out with Nettie or whoever. Yeah. But it's more so about figure out the deeper meaning. You're, do you have pain in your body? Are you unhappy? Not just the physical exterior, but what's going on behind that. Interesting. So kind of going down that line of thinking, how do you uh, say like mind, body, and spirit plays a factor into all this? Yeah, um, mind, like your mind is the first thing. Like, what makes you happy? What makes you more productive? We always know this answer, but we sometimes play that we don't. But we know what makes us happy automatically. We know what will get us to be more productive. So when it comes to the workout, I want you to put your mind there first, because if your mind is not set, your body is not going to move. Mm -hmm. And that's you have to figure those two right that's why it's always mind body first and then spirit is after Got it's it. never mind spirit body it's mind body so if your mind is set in the right place mm -hmm. your body will follow and your spirit will accept whatever it is that you're trying to embrace so it's it's more than again weight loss and just focus on what does my mind need i mean there's so many mental health issues especially now they're claiming that COVID is causing a lot of people to be at home. They're lonely, yeah. PTSD. I don't see how COVID causes PTSD, but I'm not a specialist, so I'm not going to get into that. But the idea is your mind, where is your mind? You're yeah. sitting there thinking about the past or you're too worried about the future. Sure. So think about the now. Got it. So it's just like the now, let the mind think about the now, the body follows, and then your spirit Ooh. will bring you all of what it is that you need to aspire Five years from now, you have your dream job, you have a healthy home, but we have to start with the mind first. The body and the spirit will give us everything else that we're missing. That's great, interesting. What would you recommend when it comes to like setting goals with fitness? Um, goals. <laughs> I think I've, I'm, I've become the non-traditional trainer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have clients write out goals anymore. Um, I know it's a big thing that when you write it down, you see it and it becomes reality. Well, the reality of some people with fitness, that's not the reality. Or you, they can have a picture posted on, the, on their fridge, but sometimes that's still not the reality because even for me, the body that's on the fridge posted, although I might have been the best body, it wasn't a mind-body connection. 
it was totally disconnected. I look great at this point in my life, but it was because you were either young, you know, you were partying more, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your mind-body connection was the same. So sure. you had that body based on that time frame, yeah. so let's not take that into the future. Leave that body where it's at, or whoever body you're trying to aspire to have, and focus on one day at a time. Yeah. We don't do just aspire to train, or the goal settings for me is to work out twice a week with me, in one day of walking or one day of doing a yoga um, class or something yeah. on that you might find on YouTube or sometimes I will even go beyond the way and send them a personal workout for me or something that I do which is um, the NASM app so the Nike mm -hmm. Training Club app is an app that I've been using from the time I became a trainer so over 10 years now mm -hmm. and it it, the same philosophy that I teach my clients, the Nike training app has. It's been the same. So it's just like what I teach is there, but this is not my content, but this is the content that I use. So sure. twice a week with me, and then I, all before, in the beginning of my training, or even still now, I still have clients download that app, mm -hmm. and then I will screenshot them, hey, just get this done and send me a message when it's done, um, just so I know that you're moving. But it's always just do twice a day, mm -hmm. and then, as we progress, as we get to know each other, I can give you a little bit more. But I don't expect people to just do what I'm telling them to because most people are honest and they're just like, I'm only working out when I'm with you. Although you give me the additional information, I just don't have the time or I'm not thinking or something else comes up. So I try to raise the goal setting. Let's just do twice a week with me and then we go, we keep moving forward from there based on how you feel, based on sure. how much energy you have and so forth. Got it. Got it. What role does stretching and yoga play into fitness in general in your philosophy? Um, everything. Um, it really stretching really shows you how um, how tight someone is, mm -hmm. and if you and from the first parts of the stretching showing you how tight that is, it's an imbalance. From an imbalance, there's so many other <laughs> things that goes yeah. into that. But the stretching for me is why I do stretching first because. Outside, don't, as, outside of getting someone to lift up something heavy, if they can't bend and touch their toes, that's enough for me to know that they have tight hamstrings, they probably have lower back issues, their oh. core is not strong enough, and it goes one thing after another from there. So I always recommend stretching first because the more you practice stretching, the more you can actually use your muscles to their full potential. Got it. Having tight muscles or feeling tight and then still wanting to work out, you're not really working at your full potential. You're, you're putting just, yourself in, in harm. So you're just adding more stress to the body. And then one day something weird happens and you're out and you're just like, you have to start all over. Yeah. So it comes from people running away from the tightness, like, oh, this is tight, but you know, I sometimes stress like, no, that's what's bothering you from actually working out the best way you can. So let's start there first, yeah. opening the areas, making sure the joints are lubricated, mm -hmm. um, and then you can move forward. And that's the only way you can actually see someone in their full potential mm -hmm. when they're not achy so much. So stretching is the key yeah. to health and fitness. For me, stretching is, is life <laughs> in general, and stretching definitely helps you to avoid injuries at yeah. any age. So if you don't want to hurt yourself or you're afraid that you're going to hurt yourself if you go on like a weekend extravaganza with some friends or family and you're like no I can't do this because yeah. but we take away that that effect we take away that fear mm. because once you start stretching you you know your limits from there when even when it comes to picking up things and doing more push-ups yeah. it's all because your body is now opened up it's all because now your muscles are flowing the blood's flowing and it's more it's more meaningful got it is there a different type of stretching you'd recommend at the start of a workout and at the end um so straight yeah so in the fitness world there's different modalities or, or ways to stretch so dynamic stretch in the beginning just means that you're not holding the stretch you're moving blood or sending blood to the movement that you're getting ready to do mm -hmm. and then static stretching at the end of the workout once the muscle is it's is stretched from the workout its length and its tone then doing the static stretching at the end kind of just like elongate the muscle some more mm -hmm. so that it helps to decrease the soreness mm -hmm. so opposed to you you're tight and then you work out you create more tightness yeah. so if you don't stretch you're not happy, you're just bulky. So the stretching after and before really helps you to have a more fluid workout and be a more fluid individual Got altogether. It. Makes sense. What role do you see diet playing into overall fitness and kind of your program or just in general? 
Um, I do not like the word diet because it changes so much. It's like a trend. It's like. Yeah, every, it's a trend. So we stay away from trendy things, and diet is one of them. Um, even diet, as we know it in the United States, has changed for so long over the years. We went from eating full carbs, and now we're like, no, less carbs, yeah. more protein, heavy fat. And with, it doesn't matter what diet that you have or you're trying to figure out that's best for you. All diets have limited processed food, limited uh, sugar, um, limited amount of... Um, of carbs and fat because you can't overeat on anything because we know that creates something else in the body. Sure. So I don't use the word diet, I just use the word lifestyle. Mm. Every year, if you're a fit and healthy person, as you get stronger in your journey, your body starts rejecting you. So your body starts telling you what you can no longer have. So mm. it's for me, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. You get, you know that you want to keep looking the way you do. Mm -hmm. So it kind of encourages people to just start eating better. So I just, I promote eating better one day at a time, eating better, whether it's switching your breakfast to smoothies mm -hmm. um, or switching your, your dinners to salads. <laughs> Got it. But we're trying to keep it not so robotic or have people overthink on it. We just like, I just ask some basic questions. What do you eat? And then I kind of make suggestions. And then eventually their bodies start rejecting things and they tell you, I used to eat this and now I can't eat it anymore. I'm becoming lactose intolerant. I'm becoming sensitive to gluten and wheat. And it's just like, yeah, that's your body. Once it starts working, it's no longer gonna overwork itself for you to eat bad when you're trying to do good. So your body is like a machine, it would say, like I guess when you have a test, well not a Tesla, but people go from diesel to regular. When you have your sure. first car, you go put the diesel oil, yeah. and over the years as you use it, you go to the regular oil. Yeah. Well, your body is coming from regular oil to diesel, so we're going Got it. backwards. <laughs> Got it. So that's how I see it. So you no longer can put that cheap stuff in your body. Now you yeah. have to really invest in the kind of food you want because your body will tell you. You start bloating. Even if you look fit, you might have a six pack that's out here. Mm -hmm. That's your belly telling you, we need to stop with some of the things you've been eating. Sure. So let's change it. So it's you always know from within first, which is why I never try to tell anyone because of my experience. I just kind of let them go through it as we move forward. And then it become, and then it clicks for them. And then it's easier to just say, okay, let's do this now and cut all the other stuff out. Got it. So don't put them in a box. Like they yeah. have to be a certain way. Because they're working. Not everyone wants to meal prep. Not everyone, you know, I have, I train a lot of executives. I have doctors, surgeons. So I have people with very complicated lifestyles and they're helping other people too. So it's like, you have to be understanding, but yeah at their parents and helping other people. Yeah. It's like, I don't expect them to be good all the time. Sure. So it's just now, um, yeah, they you keep them outside the box because they already have too much things to worry about, but you mm -hmm. just make suggestions like, let's go to like go to Costco and get this, or I will send them pictures like, oh, I picked this up, you should yeah. try it. But I don't like say, do this. And why haven't you done this? So yeah. it's like, no. Got it. We're human, you gotta be human no matter what is it that you do. Yeah, yeah, you're helping people change their their habits. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, for sure. You can open the door if you want. <laughs> what what type of transformational changes have you seen with some of your clients? Maybe testimonies and you know to give some people confidence out there that of what's possible. Um wow, I I get a lot of testimonies, but because I have such a large group of women, I'm gonna speak on the women. Um, women journeys for me are they testimonial or as I see it is they've gone through, oh, well, I'm gonna speak locally. Since moving to Puerto Rico, that's the majority of my clients right now are Puerto Rican women. So they have gone through the bodybuilding lifestyle, whether it's from a previous trainer um, to now having the body that they love, which yeah. is flexibility, fluidity, they have lean muscle, they're not Got bulking it. up. Because that was the first thing they would tell me when they were trying, I don't want to bulk up. And I'm just yeah. like, I'm not that trainer. Like, that's not me, that's not this style. But they automatically think because the trainers I've worked with in the past did this, that I'm going to do it. So for me, the transition for them was letting go of the idea that all trainers are the same. That's Got the it. number one testimony. Number two is being able to transfer them from pre and post pregnancy. Sure. Um, and the third is just seeing them just be happy with who they are. Um, a lot of people were hiding or felt like they needed to, I don't know, felt like they just needed to impress other people. And they were getting hurt. They were creating more injuries within themselves. So now 
five years later, I still have clients who've been with me for this long, and they haven't had any injuries, they've had babies and came back, um, and they're able to, to recover faster, they sleep better. So those are the things I look for in, mm -hmm. in, in testimony for clients. How are you sleeping? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Are you happy? you know, every day that you wake up? And do you have any insecurities that you weren't expressing before? And I've seen all of that kind of fall off because they didn't, they didn't have to maintain this bodybuilding body that they thought they needed. Sure. They just, or, or whoever they were trying to put it on for is more so I can just do, I, body weight works and I am more sexy with this me that Nettie has created than yeah. I was before. So for me it's, I just like the small changes. We're not looking for six pack changes just yet. It happens over time. Again, it's a lifelong journey. Because if you get a six pack, you gotta maintain it. So do you wanna maintain it now forever or do you wanna like slowly graduate and then at 50, you'll be the only one with a six pack. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I see it. So for them, it's that transition where yeah. it's breaking the barrier that all trainers had have to be this. Um, because even a lot of female Puerto Rican trainers are bodybuilders and we all have the, different uh, physiques. So when someone normal comes to me and says, I want your body, it's like, you sure? Because this is what the island has to offer. And it's like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. So just changing the idea that we all don't have to be bodybuilders to be sexy. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of sense. For here, this is the mentality for Puerto Rico. That's yeah, the well, everybody Puerto has Rico a beach body. It's yeah. kind of everybody, you know. But the, yeah, the beach bodies are, are, are the bodybuilding bodies but there's they're naturally beach bodies here too so mm -hmm. it's uh but if you got the body fat that's if you got the body that requires more body fat and you had the trainer beating you up to keep it down and they just wanted to eat some carbs and be mm -hmm. happy now they can eat some carbs and be happy without got being it. be down to maintain it interesting so what, what, what's your passion behind uh fitness like what what drives you where, where do you what do you want to leave people with that they should know I just want to leave people better than when they came to me with, and not in the sense of how they look, but how they move and just how they operate. Yeah. Um, I'm passionate about seeing people. When I see clients move, like for me, working out is like visually, it's it's like it's sex. If that's if I can say that, it's like when you're people at the gym are watching people to see who's doing their best, to see how deep that squat is. Like there's people are eyeballing you. So for me, the passion is let people keep watching you. Like be the best you can, no matter where you are when you're working out, because it shows that you have confidence. It shows that you are happy with who you are. Yeah. Even if you were to be a bodybuilder, it doesn't matter. But it's still the confidence that you have is what is what makes me passionate about helping other people knowing that they want to look good, knowing that they want to feel sexy. Because working out, all the movements we do is things that you do in bed, just things that you do every day sitting down. So just get better at perfecting the things that we do all the time. Yeah. And that's what brings me passion, seeing the growth from going from basic squats to really good looking squats. So like, I don't even have to tell you how to squat anymore. You, you figured it out. That's my passion because from there, we can do something else. From there, we keep moving forward. So it's the moving forward, the journey to keep seeing them become this beautiful flower is what makes me happy. And, and I've chosen this, this path, or this path chose me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about your entrepreneurial journey. How's that been? How have you gone from, you know, in 2011 till now? Like, maybe how have you, you know, started to thrive? I know you're doing online training yeah. now. It's, you've, you've definitely kind of stepped it up. Um, the entrepreneur, I, for me, and I think this is God directing my path. Um, I've always said I'm never, I'm, I'm not a trainer for money, which is why I dropped that stigma from the time I decided to be a trainer. So I've been able to um, gain success from that, from letting go of the idea that you need to make money as a trainer. And it's just when you help someone, that person shares your business or your skills with mm -hmm. someone else. So I've been in this, my business only runs on, rep on the reputation or it's only recommended or a re referral. I only have a referral business. Um, and I like having a referral business because that's my only feedback that matters. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not big on being, although I do have an online platform, I'm not trying to be the trainer that everybody needs to work with. I want to work with the people who tells people who tells people and keep sure. it within a, a community because then the value of my, of my training is, is, is worth something. Yeah. Um, I'm helping someone who's, who's 
who's going to share nothing but good things about me and not just written online because then we can say anything online. So I like the personalized, exclusive sure. kind of business. And I've been able to only do that because I've been true to myself from day one. Like I said, I wouldn't train for money. And so all the money being made is from other people telling other people about me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best business you can have. I don't have to sell myself online. My business is basically selling itself. I just have to make sure that I have the capacity to take on new business mm -hmm. and keep flowing um, so that I'm not overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's, it's more beneficial having a referral reference business because it means it's a conversation that's happening yeah. and it's nothing but good. So when that new business comes in, we're all on the same page and we can keep going from there. Love it. So you just have to trust yourself, trust the, have faith. Mm -hmm. in your in your skills I have faith in my skills I have faith in my techniques um, it's not always it's not always happy it's not it's not it's not where we have moments yeah. but um, I never allow my downtime to to tell me I need to do something else training is still the number one thing I want to do forever um, and in order for me to do that I just have to keep making sure that I pass off good energy to other people and have that to kind of flow it's my symbiosis that's great. Interesting. So fasting, uh, what role do you see fasting play in kind of this overall equation? Um, ideally, when I first started running, well, before I could become a trainer, my, uh, my high school best friend, her mom's, uh, she's Eritrean, so her mom always practiced fasting as part of the, her religion. And she will always tell us, you need to do this. So I've had a, a superior mom mm -hmm. from so long who, in, who encouraged me. We didn't always take her words for it. But the one time I did fasted during Ramadan, I felt great. The energy was just there. You automatically lose fat that was just hanging off. So the last 10 pounds I needed to lose, I lost when I started fasting. And um, it was more so, it, it was a spiritual awakening for me. Um, in the sense, because I guess you were uh, food somehow is tied to your emotions. Mm -hmm. So with holding myself from food for that time period, I had a lot of flashbacks. I went through a spiritual wake and I was like, what is this? What's mm -hmm. happening? Um, and then it came, the realization came back because in Guyana, I didn't grow up with fast food. I didn't grow up with candy. I didn't grow up with anything. So for me, fasting helped me to go back to what how I was raised. I was raised with someone who um, worked in the agriculture department in Guyana. So I grew, I had a different lifestyle than, mm -hmm. than when I moved to America. I kind of just threw all that out of the window and wanted to just be a full-blown full Washingtonian, I guess, um, or just teased into it. Either way, I lost my understanding of food and that brought me back. Mm -hmm. So that bringing me back to going back to my, my adolescence days where I only ate vegetables, we only ate lean protein, we raised our own chicken, we, you know, we did, we had our own cows. I, I lived that life before, so I knew better, but I needed to go through that awakening to get back to that lifestyle. So now I kind of uh, encourage that to my clients because it was something that was with me for a very long time, um, something that I know works, but having people people kind of see again it's an emotion that people are tied to food so help trying to get them to break away from that emotion is is what we're trying to do with the fasting so what I, what i started doing again is just promoting my own fasting journey and that kind of has inspired some of my clients to kind of tag along um i deal and friends and family so now sure. it's going around but some people are doing it obviously because they want to burn fat really fast mm -hmm. and some people are doing it because they want to release the emotional mm -hmm. that's tied to their favorite dessert or their mac and cheese or whatever it is so it's uh and we it's fasting is something that's been created for centuries i didn't make this up it's just having us to go back to what worked before this new age before this western world whatever so it's going back to what our ancestors did and it also helps your body to work better mm -hmm. because we think eating all the time is what we need but your your your, your organs need a break in order for them to break down the food in order for them to separate the fat in the in order for them to do that they need a break. So um, I fast, I've been fasting sporadically over the years, but um, since quarantine, I've, I'm full blown now moving forward with fasting as a continued lifestyle and trying to 
not just do it sporadically, but to be in it. Now this is what's been missing in my lifestyle as far as moving forward. So I need to fast consistently um, because I feel better. Now my clarity is there. My spirit is much more happy and it's more of another spiritual awakening for me, but one that's leading me to the next journey, to the next step in life, and not one that's haunting me and telling me what I need to let go. So I see it as a way of clarity, mm. um, and we, I, you need clarity if you're an entrepreneur. So if I wanna continue Argyle Fit Club, if Argyle Fit Club wants to be the boss, fitness muse of the world, mm. I need to fast for that clarity to see how I can do that and how I can reach other people. Yeah, that's something that's come across. Uh, I've, I've had a couple training sessions with you and, and you seem like you live it, everything that you're describing and yeah. it, you know comes through. Um, Amy, maybe kind of final parting words or kind of thoughts along that theme and that you kind of want to leave people with? Um, I would just say, uh, just if you're new to working out or, or if you've been working out, just don't get comfortable. Change is inevitable. And it doesn't matter what stage of the fitness journey you're in, don't get comfortable. Mm -hmm. Keep changing and keep trying to do something that's different, but in a way where it adds value to your body yeah. and not deteriorate or take away from it. So if, you, if you're not flexible, aspire to be more flexible. If you're mm -hmm. not strong, aspire to lift or carry your own body weight. Sure. And that means getting better at push-ups, trying to do a pull-up. But you want to keep moving forward because there's nothing better than knowing you can always be better than where you are now. There's no set moment where it's like, I'm better and I'm better at this moment. It's like, yeah. no, you have to keep stretching your limbs in order for us to be this mountain. So I want to say be a mountain, be sturdy, but always be open and always be open to change and just try to keep every year, make something different about your lifestyle or your fitness journey different try something different, keep moving, and that keeps your motivation alive. And, and all of my clients would tell you, we never do the same workout twice in that same window. They might, all the exercises are all the same, but you never put them in the same order. It's like scrabbles. So you, what's, what are we gonna do today? They have an idea, but it's always never the same. It's always changing, and I think that's what keeps them coming back because our body changed so much mm -hmm. that it gets adaptive so fast. You don't want it to get adaptive so yeah. fast. You gotta keep stressing it. We're, we're like a, yeah, we're machines. So you gotta keep working at this machine so that it can be ultimately the most optimal thing that you have for as long as you're here, so. Yeah, that sounds like a, a good note to leave on. It's, you know, your, <laughs> your body is so powerful and kind of everything other, you know, their spirit and mind can and kind of follow. I've, the health and fitness journey is the last part, I'm sorry guys, but your health and wellness journey really is what brings you your riches or brings you whatever mm -hmm. it is that you want. Anything more of that you want comes from within. Mm -hmm. So if we work on this within, meaning there's fasting, there's meditation, there's so many other things to, mm -hmm. to, to do. So it's not just, okay, I'm gonna have a trainer. No, I'm always stretching them. I'm always giving a little bit more of an idea or share an article just so they know that there's another, there's another step. I'm like, yeah, there's another step. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's always about progressing. I mean, yeah. You say. And that's the point of working out. We progress. We have, we create programs so that people can progress, yeah. not degress. So mm -hmm. we're always the point of any trainer is to promote a program that progresses people in life. Mm -hmm. And my progression is a lifestyle. I'm not mm -hmm. just progressing them in the exercises, but I'm progressing them in their lifestyle journey overall. Whereas if they didn't meditate or fast before, now this will be a part of our integration. It's not mandatory, but it's an idea. And as they see other clients do it, they kind of jump on the bandwagon. Prayer pressure is still real, but at least in my case, it's a good cause. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So. Well, yeah, I appreciate you joining. It was good. I think everybody got a lot of value out of that. And how does, how does somebody get a hold of you? How do they, how do they find you? Um, you can find me at www a-R-G-Y-L-E fitclub.com. Um, I'm also at Argyle Fit Club on Instagram. Um, I'm also at Argyle Fit Club PR on Facebook. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Argyle Fit Club too on LinkedIn. My brand is so basic. If you like, it's so it's now so consistent since being here. If you just put in Argyle Fit Club on Google, you will find me. Good. <laughs> I appreciate you joining. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah.